Hello everyone, this is Lockpicking Dev, and today I have a special video. It's been a long time coming. I've had this set in my possession for a while. It's been sitting on my desk, and I have just have not made a video of it, so I'm forcing myself to finally do it. This video is on the um, infamous Kirigami uh, set from Sparrows, the collaboration between um, Killamaru and Sparrows. And these were designed by Killamaru and then uh, mass produced by Sparrows. And I just so happened to win the very first set in production from Killamaru himself. And uh, I did a horrible job at laminating the card. Unfortunately, the back of it looks like crap. Because, <laughs> yeah, I just did uh, what I attempted did not work. But unfortunately, the front of it does look good. Um, here's what it looks like when it comes. It comes in a really nice, really nice pouch. It comes rolled up like this with a nice string around it. And that's what the pouch looks like. And it's just really a nice pouch overall, completely gorgeous. The display, um, how it arrives, uh, really cool. And so here are all the picks inside here. Um, you will notice that immediately uh, uh, I will first state my um, opinion on these um, as a collector and just uh, being me as a person. Uh, I personally really like these. Um, I am really happy to have this set because it is a very um, innovative and artistic uh, set that he came out with. And Killamaru in general just really does some cool artistic metal work with, the, uh, with pick handles. And um, they often take quite a bit of time, which is something I can be very appreciative of. But uh, again, these it's just something we have not seen yet on the market, and I just it was really cool, and it was cool to see someone do something different. So I am proud to have these. Now um, I will uh, talk to him for uh, just as a critique, and as, as let's say as a buyer, if um, I was not a collector and I just received these, my. Um, Again, first thing, uh, pouch, everything, great layout, gorgeous, beautiful. Um, my first critique would be the amount of rakes in it. We have one, two, three, four, five rakes in it. And then we only have one, two, three picks for single pin picking. And we do have two turning tools. And the um, turning tools themselves, I'll start with those, because those are the most unique part of the set. Um, I think that kind of grabs everything. We have... Um, this one right here. In fact, I'll move this out of the way so we get a little bit more contrast there. There we go. Let's see it like that. And this one, it's a bottom of the QA turner. And we'll go ahead and grab our lock right here. You stick it in right there. And works like that. So this one has quite a big spring on it. You can see uh, the little piece of metal right here acts as little stoppers so it doesn't spring. You can see that there is barely... There's barely, I can't find the angle, there we go. There's barely a hole between there, so when it compresses just enough, it presses on that metal. Then also that spring right there, so it, it kind of controls how much springiness it does. This is the more springy of the two uh, turning tools. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's the more, uh, I would say stiff one, the more elaborate looking one as well. You can see that this one also has another little spot with a little hole right there. When we push it, it pushes on that spot right there and it stops it preventing from going um, too, uh, too springy, you know, too um, indented right there. As well as that spring and it's connected on the end where it has the other one here is not. I'm trying to get that focus there, please. There we go. So you can see the difference between the two right there. So yeah, a little bit more of a springy one and a little bit more of a uh, uh, less springy one, a little bit more of a, a tensor one. And the um, <clears throat> one thought about these are is that um, it helps uh, pick through things because you know it just you kind of just lift up and go, lift up and go, and you don't have to use a lot of pressure, especially with spool pins. And um, with spool pins, basically, you add your turning pressure. When you find a spool pin, you hit that false set. And then as you're pushing through that spool pin, pushing it the rest of the way up, it hits the turning tool, and you'll see it in the turning tool just, just a little bit as opposed to um, counter rotation. You just kind of push through the spool pins. And so the argument on the, on the spool pins, I could see that. And so that is my only one argument towards this set. 
is that in a special use case, if you knew the lock that you were working on and you just didn't feel like you were having a hard time with counter rotation that day, you could throw this in and see if maybe you're having um, a little too heavy hay under pressure and see if you can push your way through the spool pins that way and just let your touring tool do the counter rotation for you that way. So that's what, um, that's how I would uh, think of one way to um, see this thing. Otherwise, it just it just flat out absorbs feedback, and that would be my biggest criticism of it right there. Is it absorbs feedback? I can't when I'm picking. I can't really feel anything on it. And I'm trying to get a good angle here so I can actually attempt to pick this lock. We'll just keep it at that angle right there. Move that out of the way. There we go. And I'll keep my pressure here and let's see if I can. Let's see, I might have to try it. It's a little... There we go, so I'm trying not to get my picking hand in the way so you can see that more than anything. Here we go, I'll just do it like this. I'll hold the damn thing. Here we go. I think what matters most is the turning tool. feeling I'm getting sets There's my next one oh, there we go I'm not feeling it in the turning tool at all when I'm picking here and that is my biggest complaint is I don't feel anything in it really um, and I think that's that's the amount of the springiness in there is what's doing it for sure See, I'll just put it down and try to pick through it real quick. Let off the pressure and try it again. And this is with my um, a Lawlock Tools pick, which is worth pointing out because it is not the pick that comes with the set. Oh, there we go. There's our open. So yeah, there we go. So it worked out, and again, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything in my turning tool as I was doing it. The little clicks, the, the turning, the rotation or anything, it just felt, I was just focusing mainly on what I was feeling with my pick there, which um, I really don't like, because I can, I can pick a lock without hearing it, but I cannot pick a lock without feeling it with both of my hands. Uh, let me show you the single pin um, picking picks that are included in here. So again, that was with um, a Lawlock Tools pick. So that's the thickness of that. And here are an example of how thick, which is my criticism of these picks, how thick those are. So that's kind of the difficulty with these picks is they really, oops, dropped one. It, it limits what you can pick. And the profile on these as well actually limits it as well. And let me show you what I mean. So here are the do it like that. There we go. There are the profiles, and they are thick. So the shanks are thick, and the heads of them are very thick as well. So the head of this uh, this flat lifter right here, it's just really super <laughs> super freaking thick i'm trying to see if i have another um a flat head okay yeah here is a uh, a jimmy prototype to compare it to you can see the jimmy flat head on the bottom that's a typical flat head and this one at the top is just two times the length right there so you're always hitting here actually zoom in so you're always hitting other pins behind it on accident. So that really limits um, what you can pick as well. So you can't pick Americans and Master Locks as well with it because those pins are so small. And the same with the rest of the picks here too as well. 
You can see that the diamond, again, I don't like diamonds because of that surface area right there. That'll hit a pen before or after it way easier. So I just, I never use a diamond. And then here's our simple hook right here. And it is still, it has a wide head on it, even compared to, even compared to the Jimmy flathead. There's just still, they're just really thick heads on them. And so that is uh, my main complaint. These really limit what you can pick. And when you combine the two, it limits it even more. And the reason being that it limits it even more is because, let me see which one of these is the better one. Here we go. Yeah, this one doesn't, this hook doesn't have a bad surface area. But the reason being that it gets even harder when you combine the turning tool and the hook. The turning tool takes up a lot of areas already, and then your hook is so thick that just sticking it in the keyway, you're already I can I'm trying to I'm trying to be super reasonable here at keeping the turning tool as far down as possible and it's still hitting pins, just sticking it in. It's so thick. Let's see, I'll take that out. I really need the almost the entire keyway for this thing to work or a very small turning tool or it does work fine with top of the keyway turning uh, a turning tool it's still I have another here's where the criticism of the picking part comes in play is that I do hold it up here which helps me out every once in a while I do from my thumbs on the springy excuse me again uh, springy part right here and when I do that I really I feel I'm lifting harder um, I'm not feeling the feedback in this and that makes it yeah, just really hard to keep up with where I'm at, what I'm doing, and whether or not if I'm trying to overset a pin or if I'm trying to just naturally set a pin because I feel or I don't feel is what I mean how hard I'm lifting. Let's see if I can open. I've gotten open once with uh, this pick and this turning tool once before. So there we go. Oh yeah, so I am getting a little flex here as I'm doing it. So let me zoom out actually. Right, my body, so I'm actually trying to pick it correctly as I'm doing this. So yeah, you can see the flex and the handle there. And I feel like that doing that too, that movement is throwing me off a little bit too as I'm trying to lift because then my fingers are moving even more as I'm trying to add more and more pressure. I want them to stay stiff as I'm adding more pressure going up. That way it's a constant pressure, not it starts soft and gets stiffer. I know I can get this open with this pick. I at least want to do that real quick. I may just skip it. Um, yeah, we'll just skip it, but you can see the bendiness. That's what I'm trying to show. That's the main part there. And then, of course, it has uh, the uh, multitude of rakes that I mentioned in here. And we will use just a typical um, a three hump rake right here. I'm oh, sorry, a four one right here. And we'll use, we'll actually use the the turning tool with it. We'll see how that goes. I haven't tried this yet. I've done it with a normal um, bottom turning tool, I think, so far. And I think my my impression on the rake, actually, after doing the um, cloaked entry co's um, twist picks, is that maybe... There we go. There's our open. So that works out. And that's a typical standard rake, though, is going at it and having your way at it and thrashing on it. So it does work out. But what I was getting at is um, maybe the little bit of flex here isn't too bad in the rake, maybe because then it prevents you from lifting too hard and overlifting, uh, you know, using too much pressure. So maybe with the rake we could argue that as well. So maybe not too bad there, but we see that a rake definitely, okay, yeah, does work just fine. And that is the, the four-humped rake right there. But yeah, there are several rakes within the set. So we got four more there. So we have another right there, which is a three right there. We have a longer wavy rake down here. We have another three style up here, which is almost like a three worm. And another almost a three type 
city style, I guess you would call it. There's a little different depths right there. So yeah, multitude of rakes. But yeah, the I think the the eye catching part of this one is the um, the turning tools. Uh, I, I personally uh, picking with them, yeah, I don't feel a whole lot with the turning tools or with the picks while picking them. I could see, however, um, a rake with the style handle being probably useful. I think um, you one one could argue that it would take just a little bit of that pressure off, preventing from oversets, which isn't too bad, and it's not twisted up here like the. Um, uh, the twist picks are, so it's not going to break, which is nice. So it kind of has that same uh, mindset of uh, not overlifting and hitting it too hard. So uh, I can say you could argue with that. And I would say that one could possibly argue that in the instance of if you know what lock that you were picking, and you know it's just full of spools, you could possibly use, and you needed bottom of the gateway turning, <laughs> turning tool, you could use one of these and just push your way through the spools. You can find a few videos online. It they, they do make it look easy, but then my thought is to, as many have pointed out, then you don't know what the you're not getting used to normal turning pressure and counter rotation, and you're not keeping up with that. So what you're learning really is a whole new technique and feel outside of your normal picking expertise. So um, is it worth it at that point? So. Uh, yeah, this was the Kirigami uh, collab set with Sparrows and Killamaru. Um, again, I really like it. This is a uh, a cool little set. Um, again, really artistic. If you haven't seen Killamaru's work, um, I highly recommend you check him out. Uh, his Instagram is amazing. He does some really, really cool metal work. Anyways, yeah, Kirigami uh, Killamaru set. Alright everyone, thanks for watching.